Today on Judge Faith, a goddaughter accuses her godmother of taking her car on a joyride that ends in an unfortunate accident. I kind of knew something was wrong because she was inside waiting for me. Right then and there, when, when I got off the airplane, she was like, I'll help you pack. I've lived on that street for eight years, and this is the first time that this has happened. When you lie to me about one thing, I start questioning everything else you said in court to me today. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Brandy Obiama says she trusted her godmother to take care of her car while she was away on a trip, but instead it was returned in worse condition. She's suing for damages to her car and an insurance deductible. Defendant May Crawford says she owes nothing because it's not her fault the car got hit while it was parked on a public street. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Obiyama versus Crawford. Thank you, Juan. Brandy Obiyama. Correct. You are suing the defendant, May Crawford? Yes. For $1,550 for damages to your car and an insurance deductible? Yes. As a result of an accident you say she is responsible for? Correct. Okay, so why don't we start from the beginning? How do you know Miss Crawford? Um, actually, she's been a longtime friend. Uh, basically, she's my godmother's actual aunt. Um, we haven't seen each other probably in like 15 years just because she lives in Louisiana now and I live in California. But I recently moved to Louisiana to go to school at LSU, so um, I go home like every summer. So when I went home, um, my roommates were already gone. And it was just easier also because, like I said, my roommates weren't there, so I wasn't going to be able to leave it at home. I kind of felt uncomfortable. The car? But, yeah. What kind of car is it? It's a 2014 Toyota Corolla, and it was new, and I had just bought it like previously before I moved to Louisiana in 2014. Mm -hmm. So I really, you know, wanted eyes on it more so than anything. So you were leaving for the entire summer? Uh, just for three weeks. So three from weeks. August 5th to the 25th. Okay, and so you called her up, and what was the conversation about your car and where where it would be left? Um, basically, she actually showed me where it would be left. We we made arrangements before for me to come and drop it off, but when I actually physically got there, she actually showed me where it would be at, and it was supposed to be off the street on the sidewalk because mm -hmm. um, in New Orleans, like the sh the streets are very small, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, it was like in her grass area in front of her house. Okay, what ends up happening to the car? You're here because you say she's responsible for yeah. damage to your so car. So the first week, actually, a couple days after I had actually got home, like probably three or four, I can't remember exactly, she called and told me that my window busted, and I was like, that's kind of irregular, you know, for even with heat and everything, it was August, I mean, it is hot, but... Very hot in New Orleans Yes, yeah. and I even asked my uh, coworkers, I was like, is that something that happens out here because I'm not familiar, So you the know? window broke because of the heat, that's what yeah. she told you? Yeah. And then what else happened? So later on, when I got home, about time that I got off the airplane and got to her. To, she and you're back in Louisiana at this yeah, point? Yeah, at this point. And at that time, she was basically telling me now that my car had been sideswiped. But when she was making it seem like it was just my side view mirror, like my, you know, passenger side mirror. But when I got out there, it was literally side swipe from basically the back door to the front bumper. Let so, me see the photos. And what did she tell you happened? Um, she basically said somebody side swiped and... Okay, so this is the car prior to damage, right? Yes. Okay. And my thing about the side swiping... How did she tell you what happened, the side swipe happened? She said that it was on the opposite side of the road instead of being on her side of the street. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's the passenger side instead of the driver's side because her house, if, uh, her house is actually on the right side. If it was parked legally on mm -hmm. the road, why would she be responsible for someone else hitting it? I don't believe that it was actually parked. Like, I actually think she was actually using it because... Oh, you think she was driving yeah, it? Yeah, because if not only is it that... That it let was me on, get to let me. Uh, on I right. want to hear her side of this okay. first, and then uh, you can tell me about your theory. Okay. Of, of what happened to the car. Okay, okay. Your Honor. Go ahead. The car was parked, like she said, on the grassy area, but I parked my car there too. So prior that evening, that before she came in, I moved the car on the other side of the street. So when it came time to go to the airport, 
to pick her up. I can come out, get in the car, because I think her plane came in maybe at 12, 12.30 or something like that at night. I can walk out there, get in her car, and go to the airport and pick her up. Well, okay, so help me understand why it was necessary to do that. If, if you were able to come and go and her car was sitting there for three weeks, why it did wasn't you have sitting to move there it? For, it wasn't sitting there for three weeks. I had an all-white party that my husband and I were going to, and I called Brandy, and I asked Brandy, was it okay to drive her car? And she told me, oh, yes, that's fine. I have no problem with that. So, so we did, did drive, drive it to the party. Okay. We did drive it there, but it was at a hall, you know, it was real ritzy and nice, you know, not a lot of drinking and all that. So, so you I didn't have an accident when you went no, to the all-white party? No, and who drove, no, you or your husband? I did. Okay. What happened was I parked her car on the other side of the street. So when I come out at 12 o'clock the night and get to pick, go to the airport and get her, I wouldn't have to move my car and get her car out and move. So I parked it over there. When I came out of the house, getting ready to go to the airport, that's when I saw this had happened. Okay. Now, I told Brandy I would help her pay for it. I did tell her that. Mm -hmm. But my thing now is, number one, I don't have the money. Number two, why am I the only one here? Why don't you have, why is the city of New Orleans here? Because it was parked on the city street. You're not I wasn't get driving money from it. the city of New Orleans. Let's just be realistic <laughs> about that. That's why you're here. Yeah, but, but you what happened to, but so. But you know, I felt bad. I felt bad because she's a young girl. This was her first car, mm -hmm. and I did feel bad about it, mm -hmm. you know? So I did tell her that. But I'm like, I wasn't driving the car. It's not my, you know? It was parked, on, it, and it happens. These things happen. Did you happen. call the police and make a police report or I wanted anything? to call the police and make a police report. Brandy didn't have time to come back down because the car had to physically be there. And see, when I came out my house, she, when I got to the airport, she was already there at this time of night. So we went to the airport, we came back, and she went on home. Okay, so just so I can recap, in the three weeks you had the car, the heat shattered the window. Right. What, what, the passenger side window? Yes. And her car was side swiped. Right. Okay, and so how do you find out that the window shattered? I was inside, and my little godson, he was outside, he's six years old, he was outside, he said, May, he said, the car window broke. And I went and I looked, and the window was still up and everything, but the glass was just shattered. Coming up, was the damage to the car the result of an accident or an irresponsible driver? Do you have a valid driver's license? Um, not right now. It's expired. It expired when? Uh, last month. So if I step off the bench right now and I check your DMV records, it's going to tell me that you have a valid Louisiana driver's license during this time period? Plaintiff Brandy Obiama says her godmother crashed her car. She's suing for damages to her car and an insurance deductible. Defendant May Crawford says she owes nothing because the car got hit while it was parked on a public street. Okay, let me see the map of the uh, street in your neighborhood where the car was parked. Can you walk over there and just show me? The car was parked in front of my... This was my car. The car was parked in front of my car. On the grass over... Right, oh, where you're right. Okay. But the night before I went to pick her up at the airport, I parked the car over here mm -hmm. so that I can just, you know, get in it and go. I don't understand why you would need to move the car from that grassy area. You can drive off just as easily from that grassy area as you could from but a car see, being I across the street. But see, I had her car in the front, and I park my car back here because the curb gets high, and I back up, and I come off the curb. Okay. You think she was driving your car, and that's how these things happened? Honestly. What proof do you have of that? Because so far, she had your car parked legally on the street, and if someone else hit it, She's not responsible for that. Just because you asked her to wash the car and keep the car, that doesn't create a legal contractual responsibility if someone comes along and there's an accident. Why do you say she was driving the car without your permission? Because not only... Well, she did ask me for permission, like she said, to go to the white, uh, white party. And I told her, yeah, because at that point, I didn't believe that necessarily the window shattering was her fault. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe that. But when I got home, not only the fact that she waited to tell me, I felt like... I felt like it was done before that, and and she just waited until I got off the off the flight. And not only that, but it was a lot of smoke, like it was a, a strong smoke smell in my car. Did she which, smoke? Yes, and I don't smoke at all. Did you smoke in the car when you went to the white party? No. I did smoke in the car when I was on my way to the airport because my nerves was bad. 
Okay, so just that one time. Yes, my nerves was real bad. You, so you say it was the strong smell of smoke in the yeah. car and the fact that she didn't tell you until yeah. after you landed that your car had been yes. sideswiped and you think it happened before that? Yes. yes, I really do. It just didn't make sense. What about the conversation about her paying for Because so far, I mean, so, I'm still not when, convinced. When I got off, as soon as I got off the plane, like, she was like, oh, like, almost scared me in a way because she was like, oh, something happened to your car. Like, I'm literally at baggage claim, and that's what she's telling me. And, you know, usually people just pick you up at the curb. So I kind of knew something was wrong because she was inside waiting for me. And so that kind of scared me because I thought maybe my whole car was messed up or something what like that. What was the conversation about her paying for the damages? She said, the, like, right then and there when, when I got off the airplane, she was like, I'll help you pay. She even went as far as to text me and say, like, uh, what's your address so I can send a money gram? Did she ever send you any money? No. Mm -hmm. And what was the, you have a voicemail you wanted me to listen to? Yeah. Brandy, this is me. You can take me to civil court if you want. I don't have a job. I don't have anything. It's going to end up the same way. I can't pay you. I can't give you no thousand dollars. I don't have it. So I, it doesn't matter to me what you do. You can't get blood out of a turnip. Turnips don't have blood. I am a turnip. <laughs> Excuse me, Judge. May I say something, please? Yes. Now. Mind you, when this first happened, her brother was calling me, telling me that he had paid for it. I had to pay him. Well, that's not the point. The point is, whoever you have to pay, are you responsible for damaging the car? Um, I don't. And feel you like say I'm... you listen. I understand. You said you can't get blood from a turnip. You're a turnip. You say <laughs> you don't have the money to pay, although you offer to pay. But now you're saying you're not responsible. Do you do you have a valid driver's license? Um, not right now. It's expired. It expired when? Uh, last month. Last month? Mm-hmm. So you had a valid driver's license. Why did it expire? What, why'd you let it expire? I haven't had time to go So what do you thing. have with you now? I what just kind have of ID? Louisiana ID. May I see it, please? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so... This ID was issued back in February of 2014. I, yes. So you didn't just get this ID? No. No. Why would you get a... a, a because, because it I, looks just like a driver's license, but right. it's not. It's an identification right. card. Right. So if I step off the bench right now and I check your DMV records, it's going to tell me that you have a valid Louisiana driver's license during this time period? I don't think so. Okay, you just it told me you did. So. I did. I did have one, but... I had got too many tickets, and it wasn't valid. Okay, so let's start over again. Mm -hmm. During the time that you had her car, in this three weeks that you had her car, you were obviously mm -hmm, right. driving it on at least three occasions. Right. Did you have a valid no. driver's license? No, I had okay, it, but so it was Okay, so don't lie valid. to me. I'm because sorry. Because when you lie to me about one thing, I start questioning everything else you said in court to me today. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you have a valid driver's license? Because of the tickets I have. I'm trying to pay them off. What tickets? Tickets for what? Three speeding tickets. Speeding mm -hmm. tickets. Yes. Yeah. And then I got pulled over. When's the last time you had a valid driver's license? About seven years ago. Oh. Yeah. So the state of Louisiana for Never. seven years, the for seven of... years, have not allowed you to have a driver's license. I've never went Because there's an, obviously an issue. Ma'am, my California license was good when I got there. I had those for three years. Then I went and got their license, and I got tickets. We're going to take a break. I'm going to pull up your driving record. We're in recess. Okay. Coming up on Judge Faith, a surprise discovery puts today's testimony under suspicion. Did you know she didn't have a license? I did not, ma'am. Did you know anything about her driving no. record? This is your record from California, when you lived in California, not even Louisiana. Plaintiff Brandy Obiyama says May had an accident while driving her car. She's suing for damages to her car and an insurance deductible. Defendant May Crawford says she owes nothing because Brandy's car was damaged in a hit and run. Before I talk about what I researched um, during the break, let me see the video you submitted to court, Ms. Crawford, about the street and the issue with the street where you live. As you can see, there are cars on both sides of the street. It's a very near, narrow path to go through. This is my block that I live in. It's only 7.54 p.m., 9 o'clock, both sides of the street 
will be full. You're driving, I'm assuming, in the video? <laughs> yes. So we're clear? OK. And you're actually showing me this to, to show that it's a really tight street. Yes. And I'm assuming cars are, you, you know of other cars that have been hit on the street? Yes, ma'am. So why would you park a car there if you know this? I had knew it before then. You didn't this know happened, before this no, accident that no, another car had been hit no, on that street? It, had, it happened after. I've lived on that street for eight years, and this is the first time that this has happened. And the man across the street, we came out one morning, someone had sideswiped his truck. Did you know she didn't have a license? I did not, ma'am. Did you know anything about her driving no. record? Did you have your car examined? Did an expert look at it and give you some kind of uh, ruling about whether the car was moving or parked when it was hit? Uh, yeah, when I went and got it done, basically, they basically said that it probably got hit, like from how everything looked. Parked or moving? Moving. Like, how it, okay. from how it looked, from them doing everything, because they mm -hmm. literally had to take, like, my door off and everything and buff it out and all that. So and they think it had been in an accident? Basically, yeah. And your position is the window and the side swipe. By the way, was that on the same side? Same side, exactly. Mm -hmm. Your position is the car was in an accident and all this damage happened at the yes. same time? Correct. You know, I have to tell you, before I asked you about your driver's license, and which was an aside to this case, before I asked you about that, I thought this case was a slam dunk for you because there was really no evidence on her part to establish that, um, that you'd done anything wrong besides park this car on your street. But I have to tell you, this is just your driving record from California. Never, All the infractions from California alone, I've not even had, Louisiana. I've never had any license Crawford. in Louisiana. Okay, I didn't, I didn't ask you about your license in I Louisiana, Ms. Crawford. This is your record from California when you lived in California, not even Louisiana. You have a terrible driving record. Huh? You know, you lost a lot of credibility with me because you started lying when I started asking you about having a driver's license. There's a reason why you don't. No, it's... You don't obey traffic laws, clearly. Your Honor, and this is, this is why. absolutely incredible. I think you were driving this car. No. Your I think Honor, you were driving the car. I lived in Louisiana 10 years. I've had a car for the past two and a half years. I haven't had a car. That's why and I you don't have, have a license. license. Don't you understand that's a problem? No, I didn't have... I just... I was riding buses. I didn't need no license to ride buses. You drove her to the airport? I did. You, you drove back home? I did. You drove to the white party? I did. You drove back home. You right. picked her up from the airport right. and you drove. And now you want to tell me those are the only five times, though, <laughs> that, that I've actually driven this. in the last two and a no, half years. No, her car. Because I just got a car. The man across the street gave me a car. Do you not understand that you're not supposed to be driving? It doesn't matter whose car you're driving. Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith Rules. May I see the estimates for the damage to the car, please? Okay. I think the car was in an accident. The car was in an accident. And I do not believe that it was side swiped on the street which is why you probably were so readily volunteering to pay $1,000, because it's one thing for you to feel bad, Juan, when, when, if you're in an accident, and uh, you feel bad because you feel partially responsible, right? But it's another thing to offer to pay $1,000 mm -hmm. if you feel that you've done absolutely nothing wrong. I felt You can bad. be nice and apologize and offer to help out, but you offered to pay $1,000. I felt bad because she's young and that was her first But you time. offered to pay, that's fine. You feel bad, I understand. But then you took it a step further. You yourself said you don't have a lot of money. You offered to pay $1,000, but you did nothing wrong. You offered to pay the $1,000 because you knew you've been in an accident in this car, and based on your driving record, no one's surprised. You're the only one in this courtroom today that's acting dumbfounded. On that, sure. Yeah, you're right. Well, you said you can't get blood from a turnip, but you're gonna have to come up with some money from somewhere. $1,500 to $18 judgment from the plaintiff. I just wish she would have took responsibility for it ahead of time instead of making it come this far. As far as my driver's license, I didn't have a car. Why well, I need a driver's license? If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.